Uh, I hope you can all see my presentation. And so, as Alan said, we are going to move now to Europe uh, to, and I'll talk about the nuclear divestment in Germany. Uh, so there are five areas uh, I want to talk about shortly. Uh, first of all, I'll start with a quick overview of nuclear divestment in Germany. Uh, then I'll talk about the main, cr main criteria and norms used and the main reasons for divestment in Germany. Uh, for the last two points, I'll share some observations and experience I've had made so far uh, and which will hopefully already start to answer some of the questions that were submitted. So, no. great. So who has divested so far? Currently we list 10 uh, examples of nuclear uh, divestment in Germany, all with different motivation and criteria. In our context, we are looking at divestment as part of sustainable investment as opposing to the divestment done regularly by companies, for example, caused by modernization and then which are designed to reduce risk for the company. Uh, the process of divesting is started by adopting an exclusion list, uh, a so-called negative list in the guidelines uh, for the investments of their special funds, reserve funds, or pension funds. On this list, uh, a set of criteria are named based on the interests of the city or state. Uh, that way, the manager of the funds are prohibited to, or are prohibited from acquiring stocks of companies or whole industries, or even government bonds. The final step is then to continuously control the investments. Are the investments still in compliance with the parameter sets? Have there been breaches? And so on. For the compliance control, either an external rating agency can be hired, or the finance department or ministry can be tasked with the control. And this is definitely the most laborious and expensive part of divestment, to which I'll talk a little bit later. So what are the main divestment areas in Germany? Normally, divestment criteria are based on an ESG approach, which means that environmental, social, and government criteria are considered. You can see here for yourself which the core criteria are so far in Germany. One point I would like to highlight are fossil fuels. Even though they are the most prominent field of divestment campaigns, and Rob will talk about the link of fossil fuels and nuclear weapons later on, it is not fossil fuels across the board, but only coal and oil, not natural gas, that is divested from. In addition to these criteria, we have also norms that a company or a country uh, should adhere to. For example, we have the UN Global Compact, or for companies, the UN Principles of Responsible Investment, or we have treaties in Germany, uh, uh, which, uh, for example, are uh, that states uh, have to be signatories to the climate change uh, agreement or the MPT. The two main reasons for divestment uh, are environmental concern and in the traditional sense of divesting to, de to decrease the risk for your long-term investments, which is especially important for the pensions of civil servants. And financial returns are of course the main concern and hindrance for divestment. And, uh, but in the recent years, we have seen that with the increased demand for sustainable investments, the market has reacted with investment vehicles focused on sustainability, which then helped sustainable investment to become more mainstream. And this is an important argument for divestment campaigners like us. So now to share some experience. Uh, I split the slide into th three sections. Before the divestment motion, um, 
before the adoption of the divestment and afterwards. In Germany, we have no company or no companies that produce nuclear weapons. So the exclusion would not threaten the local, local economy here. However, the order of how you mention your different criteria can also be important. Our experience was that because nuclear weapons and conventional weapons of war were mentioned together, or nuclear weapons were mentioned as a subpoint uh, of conventional weapons, both types were not included in the new guidelines. So it was not only a loss to us, but also for the hard campaign work uh, that was done. And so what can we learn from this? Uh, by separating nuclear weapons and conventional weapons, or mentioning nuclear weapons first and then conventional weapons, it helps to hedge our bets uh, in regions where weapons manufacturers are very strong. And so it helps to improve the chances of uh, seeing the divestment motion go through. The second point I want to make is more legal point. Um, yeah, I can only stress the importance of using correct legal and not colloquial terms. In German, the, the term uh, military weapons is very often used, but there's no official definition, unlike for weapons of war, which are defined by the War Weapons Control Act. And this is just an easy measure to plug legal loopholes, uh, which can otherwise be exploited if you want to. Uh, my, my other point where everybody involved in uh, divestment motion should really pay attention to is including direct and indirect financing for investments. So if only uh, the direct financing is forbidden, then companies can still be invested in by investing in funds or ETS and other options, which in turn invest the money you gave them or they received in these companies. So it would totally defeat the purpose of the divestment. And finally, there needs to be a plan before, <laughs> before the adoption about what to do after the adoption. And so I already talked about it uh, a bit, how and who should control the uh, compliance with the guidelines. Do we uh, already have experts in the field um, or very easy, can we duplicate or do we want to duplicate or buy an already existing sustainable index, which can save us a lot of money and uh, is a good argument for divestment. So in my opinion, the strength of divestments on a subnational level is the versatility. They allow for adapting the occlusion criteria to the special circumstances in the region and uh, to account for econ economic pressure in the region. At the same time, every divestment decision and by cities or states increases the visibility of every divestment campaign and increases the pressure on the national level. In turn, this can lead to strengthening international commitments, as we have seen in Philadelphia, for example and help to move the nuclear weapons money to a more sustainable purpose. Okay, so thank you um, for your attention.